So what I want to go over today is that lab activity one stuff a little bit, just walk you through it. Most of the stuff is pretty simple. You can get an idea just by reading the book, but I want to walk through a couple just major points, right, about body organization. Right? And the first thing I want to kind of point out here is that, you know, your body, if you look from a gross anatomy point, one of the first things you want to think about how our body organized is that we are bilaterally symmetrical organisms, right? Like most animals are, unless you're a starfish or a jellyfish. Our left right side is the same thing as our right side, pretty much. It's a mirror image of it, right? So this is called bilateral symmetry, right? So in other words, on the surface, at least, you know, your left and your right side are mirror images of each other, right? That's not true here, right? Because your heart's a little bit to the side, your liver is a little on your right side, your stomach's a little bit here, you have a spleen over here. So internally, we're not bilaterally symmetrical, but outside, you know, you got a left eye and a right eye, a left half of the nose and a right eye, right? And they're roughly equivalent to each other, except that they are mirror images, right? So the other thing about our body is we can kind of divide it into two major regions, an axial region, which is include your head, the neck, the trunk area where your limbs are uh, attached to, your upper limbs are attached to, and then your pelvis area, right, where your lower limbs are attached to, right? This is the axial region. We'll go over axial skeleton. We'll go over axial muscles. Right, and then attached to them, you got your limbs, right? Your legs and your arms, your appendicular region, or your appendicular skeleton, your appendicular muscles, right? So these are your major sort of body parts, head and trunk and pelvic and limbs, right? Basic body organization, big gross anatomy picture, right? And then within certain regions, we're gonna be breaking down into smaller regions, right? So this chest area up here, like your thoracic rib cage here is in your thoracic region. Most people are familiar with that word, your abdominal region, right? Is where your stomach and stuff is. And then your pelvic region down here, right? So you could break these down into smaller regions, right? And, you know, when we're looking at these regions, they're gonna kind of differ from each other or maybe look at differences and similarities. Right, so if you looked at the rib cage around here, right, and if you looked at what, how's this organized, say, well, you know, there's a skin, connective tissue, and then it comes to some sheets of muscle surrounding the ribs right there. And you're gonna come to this cavity right here in this thoracic region right there. And then you'd have your lungs and stuff like that, right? Or, you know, if you looked at the leg right there, you did some looking in what's in there. Again, skin, kind of muscle, connective tissue, bone, right? And all that structure, all blood vessels running through it. But that would be like this, this region down here, right? Your limbs and stuff. And then maybe even closer, you'd have like this little patch sitting right here under your underarm. That's a named region. And it's kind of called the axillary region. And it's an important thing. This is where all your blood vessels and nerves and stuff coming from your midline here going out to your arm, right? So you got things like your axillary artery, your axillary veins, your axillary nerves, right, going under your underarm right here, right? So it's a region, and things are named after that region of the body right there, right? So what is all this getting at? All the regions of your body are kind of mapped out into smaller subdivisions, and you have to kind of know these throughout the entire semester, right? Just like I said, there's going to be axillary nerves, blood vessels and stuff going through right here, right? So you're going to want to kind of go through this list right here, get the ones you know, things like, you know, nasal is pretty obvious, oral, you should probably guess. And then it comes to things like mental. And how are you going to know it's the chin? Well, you're just going to have to make something up for yourself, right? Something like axillary region, that's where you put ax underarm deodorant, right? So that you'll remember that that's the armpit, right? And then you'll get to things like your brachial region, where you have 
your brachial artery, your brachial nerve, your brachial vein going through. You have your biceps brachii muscle. You have your brachialis muscle. You have your coracobrachialis muscle. You have your, brach your brachioradialis muscle. On the back of your arm, you got your triceps brachii, all named after the brachii, right? So these kind of terminology, these body regions are gonna come up throughout the entire semester. So you wanna go through these, check off all the ones that you kind of know already, that you can kind of guess, right? Other ones you might not be directly familiar with, but you can kind of guess the carpal, right? Carpal tunnel syndrome relates to the wrist. And that almost rhymes with tarsal, which is like the wrist of your foot, right? That sort of uh, connection between your leg and your foot right there, the tarsal region. So this is something you'll do on your own to kind of walk through and kind of learn these names. I don't test all the obscure stuff, but they just come up over and over. So it's really good to kind of learn these names. It gives you a clue uh, when we talk about these bones and blood vessels and stuff like that. All right, so these are regional names. Your basic body plan though, when we're talking about looking at how your body is constructed, right? This is what I want to get into now, right? And as I just mentioned before, you know, you're gonna get this like skin, connective tissue, muscle, bone kind of organization. So if you cut open, did a cross section of your leg, that's what you'd see. You'd come, you first layer would be your skin, which has some connective tissue as part of it. You'd come to a layer of adipose tissue, which is a part of connective tissue. You'd come to this fascia, right, which is covering the muscle, which is another connective tissue. Then you'd come to bone, I mean muscle, and then bone, right? And then interspersed running through it all, you'd have blood vessels, right? You'd have arteries and veins, and you'd also have nerves, right? Running through all this tissue right here, right? And that's pretty simple. Anywhere you look for your limbs or your trunk or even your head, right? you'd have this skin over here, fat, connective tissue, muscle, bone. But in the case of the head, you're gonna come to this big cavity right here, this big space right over here. It's not gonna be solid like your limbs. Right? There's gonna be this big space and this is where it starts getting complicated. Right? So if you cut that bone open, you look inside here and then you have this big blob sitting under here, which is your brain, right? Here's the those layers kind of peel back and then you can see it right here, peel back. Here's the skull and he's showing the brain sitting in this cavity right here of your skull, right? This hole where these soft organ is sitting. So this is gonna be the same for your trunk, skin, connective tissue, muscle, bone, right? a couple layers of connective tissue. And then you come to this big space, this big cavity right here. And then inside that cavity is where, you know, depending on where you are, it's gonna be your lungs, your heart, and all your guts and stuff like that. This big space that holds all that stuff. Once you get in that space, it gets really complicated and you start getting into all sorts of different organs organized in a particular way and formed by and formed in very particular you know, tissue constructs right there, right? So that's where it gets complicated inside these cavities right here where all your soft organs are. So we're going to talk about these cavities a little bit and what that means and all the different sub cavities, right? Easiest thing to think of is when you gut a fish or you know you buy a fish, all the guts have been removed. Right, so that normally you'd have the fish's lungs if it was a land-breathing fish, you have its heart, right? And then you have all its guts and stuff in here, right? Okay, and its gills. Right, but all this stuff would be removed and then you'd be left with this big empty space right here, right? So that would be your body cavity right here. One body cavity, your body wall, scales, connective tissue, muscle, bone, body cavity in this case, right? So these body cavities, they right, all have names. This is the slide from your book that you can go by. I just wanted to leave that in there, but I'm gonna go over uh, a little bit breaking down right here, right? First, there's these posterior ones that I talked about, the skull, and then your vertebral column back here. That's where your brain, your spinal cord sit. Don't worry about those right now. We'll get to those when we get to the nervous system. Nobody calls these dorsal cavities. They just call them a skull and your vertebral column. So really we wanna be in focused on this anterior one, this one on your front right here, 
you know, this anterior cavity right here, right? And that's going to be split up into several smaller cavities, right? So here it is on the front, this big single ventral body cavity. It's going to be divided into two major cavities, right? Your thoracic cavity up here. Remember, I talked about the thoracic region. That's your thoracic cavity. And then you have an abdominal pelvic cavity, right? These two cavities are separated, this diaphragm right here, right? This muscular diaphragm. So that's a real separation, right? This thin sheet of muscle separating the thoracic cavity from the abdominal pelvic cavity right here, right? So within your ventral cavity, you have that thoracic and abdominal pelvic cavity. Within your abdominal pelvic cavity, there's another division uh, into your, not with any clear marker, but your abdominal cavity and then your pelvic cavity roughly by the top of your hip bones is separated. And then you're gonna have your abdominal stuff in here and your pelvic stuff in here, right? There's no clear separation like this muscular diaphragm though. So within your thoracic cavity, it's gonna be subdivided into a couple of other cavities. You have two, what are called pleural cavities. Right here, pleural cavities. And that house the left and right lungs, right? Basically these little cavities. And what you wanna think of these cavities right now are just these little sacs that are holding the lungs right here. There's two of them because you have a left and right lung. Plural means two. That's an easy way to think of what the name is. In between the two lungs is the space right over here, is the space right over here called the mediastinum. Mediastinum, right? That's just the space, mediastinum, sorry. And that's the space right here. That's going to have your heart in it. And it's also going to have your trachea and your esophagus and other big blood vessels going through there, right? That's just a space that's not a cavity. And then within that, we said there's the heart. And within that heart, I mean, within the heart sits within the pericardial cavity over here, right? The pericardial cavity, another sac, right? That's going to, that's going to carry, that's going to hold the heart. over here, right? Your pericardial cavity. So you got these thoracic cavity, and in it you got your pleural and your pericardial cavity, these sacs that hold these organs, your, your hearts, your lungs, and your heart. Okay, so those are some of the cavities within that. And then again, your thoracic cavity right here. I mean, in your abdominal cavity is subdivided in your abdominal and your pelvic cavity, your abdominal cavity. Is going to have these organ, liver, stomach, spleen, et cetera, some of your most of your small intestines. And then your pelvic cavity, again, separated by the top of your uh, hip bones right here, are, are going to contain your bladder and internal reproductive strategies, right? Those sacs that I talked about are formed by what are called serous membranes. And I'm not going to go over into the structure. We'll talk about these next week with the actual structure, we could still think of these as sacs, right over here that hold those organs, right? And the basic idea of these is that there's this double line sac, right? One part of which touches the organ, one part of which is on the outside and in between is the actual cavity right here, right? So in this case, the analogy is the fist is the heart. There's a side of the balloon touching the heart. And then you got the space uh, in between it, that's the actual cavity formed by these membranes, right? So what I want to do, I, I think it's worth taking the time here, even though I am rush to kind of look because you are missing uh, this kind of material, right? Can take away the ribs and the intercostal muscles on each. So what she just did is remove that breastplate right here and she's going to look inside here. I just want to pay attention to this going on inside. And you'll get an idea of what you're going to see once you've completed that part of the dissection. 
Now we do have some holes within the parietal pleura here, but you can see essentially what it's going to look like. There are some areas that are thinner, almost transparent, and some areas that are pathological in this individual where they've thickened up probably because of some sort of infection within the sac surrounding the lung. This would be the parietal pleura, the outer layer of the sac that surrounds and protects the lungs. If we take that away, you can see the nice, delicate visceral pleura that's immediately on the surface of the lung. And we'll have a nice friction-free uh, movement as the lung fills with air and then releases it during exhalation. All right, and what she just described here, this fluid-filled sac right here is basically the purpose of these sacs, of these serosa, right, that surround these organs right here, right? I want to jump over over here to where she talks about the heart. As the heart enlarges so and contracts again. Here she's removed both lungs and just notice like the space, right, this cavity without the lungs right there. This is part of the thoracic cavity after those pleural cavities have been removed right there. And I've got the scissors holding on to the outer layer of the parietal pericardium. And to expose the heart itself, we need to cut through the parietal pericardium and we'll see the visceral pericardium right on the surface of the heart. So I'm simply going to make a large X-shaped cut within the pericardial sac and flip back those flaps to expose the heart. Remember to flip back the flaps. And you are now looking at the visceral pericardium surrounding. Right, so you can't really see the visceral, it's just a shiny surface. It's a very thin layer right there, but that gives you an idea of the double sort of lined sac that these are, that these organs, you know, the heart and the lungs are sitting in, right? You know, in that case, here's another site right here, right? Here is the heart sitting in the sac right over here. And you know, you can see it's covering, it's attached to the diaphragm down here. It's covering the great vessels, your aorta and your pulmonary trunk coming out of it. But your heart is just sitting in here inside this fluid filled sac while it beats, right? Then if you open it up, right? Um, you see that this would be the space, right? You can see a little space in here. This is where the fluid would be, where it sits, right? So this is the parietal pleura over here. And you wanna relate this picture um, to the cartoon picture of what we're talking about right here, right? Because you're going to have this, um, this part out here relates to this over here, this thicker part of the membrane right here. And then, you know, this part that's actually attached to the heart is the shiny surface that's very, you know, you can't really see. And then, this is the actual cavity, right? That it's sitting in the fluid filled space that the heart is sitting in, right? So when you look at something like this, it doesn't really make too much sense, but if you correlate it with the actual cadaver pictures, then it makes a little more sense, right? Um, hopefully anyway. All right, so that's the idea behind these plural, or these rather uh, serous, serous cavities, right? And you have the pericardial cavity where the heart sits, right? And you, you have that space in between it where the fluid would be, right? You have your pleural cavity. Again, the part, there's one part of the layer, your visceral pleura that's attached to the lungs and your parietal pleura is attached to the rib cage. And then in between right here, you've got the cavity actually that's the fluid filled space, right? This is an important part for breathing. So when your, love, your lungs, your rib cage pulls out, you know, this connection between the lungs and the rib cage is gonna pull the lungs out with it and expand the lungs, right? That's a big, that's a major part, which you'll get into when you get into respiratory system. So the more complicated one is within the abdominal cavity, you have what's called the peritoneal serous cavity, right? You have a lining, lining your abdominal cavity in red here, your parietal peritoneum, and then instead of a simple like pleura, uh, visceral pleura or visceral pericardium lining the heart or lungs, you got this continuous sheet that lines like the liver, your stomach, your small intestines, and they're all connected. So it's a little more complicated, but it's basically the same thing. This visceral peritoneum touches the organs. 
And then in between the visceral peritoneum and the parietal peritoneum, you have a fluid filled space. Not as much as what looks like here. There's really only about 20 mils of fluid within here, but that fluid is enough to kind of prevent uh, you know, friction in between these organs, which are kind of moving around in there, right? So that's your per peritoneal cavity. Then you also have some organs like your pancreas, uh, your kidney, your kidneys and stuff that are retro peritoneal behind that parietal peritoneum wall right there. So you might ref hear that name, retro peritoneal organ. You won't learn about this again until you get to the digestive system, but that's that other cavity, subcavity within the abdominal pelvic cavity, the peritoneal serous cavity, right? So, you know, again, thoracic cavity, you have the pleural cavities and the pericardial cavity, abdominal cavity, you're gonna have that serosa. And they have these sacs right over here, right? That are aligning them. And we'll get back to these when we talk about connective tissue, right? So now we're going to get into the body organization. Uh, if you were a physiologist kind of stuff, right? That's all anatomy, these big regions, spaces. Let's talk about the main concept of physiologies here, right? As far as things you want to think about big picture wise. I found this internet in the image, right? And I haven't covered this yet. So I'm like, all right, so we know we have worse up to 60% water. And where's that water located, right? Because of gravity, it's all sitting below your shoulder somewhere, right? So all your water in your body is below there. And then I thought, wait a second, what if he stands on his head, will all this water go to his head, right? That didn't make any sense to me. I don't know why all the water was down here. Was this all dry air? Then I saw that, oh no, you know, this is making up different portions, your brain's up here. So, you know, I don't understand how this works. Right? But this is really just talking about percentages of water total overall, as well as the different organs and stuff. What, what percentage of water those organs are made out of, right? So when we talk about these compartments, these fluid compartments, water compartments, right? We wanna break it down into a couple big categories, right? And here's your basic graph that you got here, right? So for these, you have this one section, which you're familiar with, your plasma of your blood contains this much uh, fluid, right? And so that is your whole cardiovascular system, your, your heart, your arteries, your veins. That's how much this plasma water is filling, right? Throughout your entire body. Right, going all the way up to your head, just way past your shoulders, right? So that much of the total water body content is within the plasma of your blood within these vessels right over here, right? Fluid, that's one major fluid compartment, right? That makes up some of this extra cellular fluid, right? And as far as other fluid besides plasma fluid, you have lymphatic fluid, you have cerebral spinal fluid, right? Around and within your brain in little spaces, compartments. You have synovial joint fluid within the capsules of your joint. And you have what we just talked about, that serous fluid surrounding your lungs, your hearts and your peritoneal cavity, right? That's that little section right here, right? This is like, I think it's about 150, you know, it's very little bit of fluid in your cerebral spinal fluid, right? as opposed to the overall. So all that, your blood and that makes up this small portion. Where's the rest of this extracellular fluid, you're asking, right? So let's look at this big chart again, right? What about this intracellular fluid first? What does that mean? Is it all in one big intracell? No, remember we talked about how we were made up of trillions and trillions of cells. So this intracellular fluid compartment is all the trillions and trillions of cells in your body holding each individual little fluid, right? The cytosol, basically, the fluid inside your cells. So that intercellular fluid compartment is trillions and trillions of cells that make up that, that have fluid in them. So as you can see, that makes up the bulk of fluid in your body. All these cells have a fair bit of water because you know your cells made up of a lot. Of, your body's made up of cells. Right, so all the different cells we look at, right, are that much, are filled with fluid and everything, and that's making up the actual majority 
of fluid in your body, right? And then the rest of that, right? Here's the cell inside your, here's the water fluid inside your body. Here's the fluid outside that cell right there, right? So this would be that extra cellular fluid compartment, not in your blood or lymphatic fluid, right? That's all the fluid that surrounds the cells that the oxygen is diffusing through, that the glucose is diffusing through, all that stuff, right? So here's the generic cartoon picture with the cells sitting in fluid, but of course they're not sitting in direct water, right? It's called interstitial fluid and it could be in various forms, but it's a viscous kind of syrupy fluid that's within the connective tissue around it, right? So in this case, here are the cells, blood is coming in again, diffusing through this matrix over to the cells or whatever cells are in its body, right? So all this tissue here has a lot of fluid in it, right? In particular, connective tissue is a big one, right? But in between each individual muscle cell here, even though they're pretty much tightly compacted, there's got to be a little fluid for this stuff to diffuse through. So this is your interstitial fluid, in between cells fluid, right? There it is in your gut tube, uh, around each one of these muscle cells right over here, right? For this capillary to come in here, it's got to diffuse out of the capillaries through some loose connective tissue stuff that's going to have a fluid base ground substance that it can get in through. That'll be part of your interstitial fluid. Right? So interstitial fluid is all the sort of fluid surrounding all your body cells, right? Here's the cartoon and I just gave you the regular examples. All right. All right, so that is that whole fluid compartment thing, just to kind of give you a little bit more concrete examples of what we're talking about when you look at a graph like that. Where the fluid is in your body is this intercellular compartment is actually a hundred trillion, trillion little compartments. And now you know where that interstitial fluid, something to place that to.